Well, I seriously underestimated all my kit today. I've got like a canvas tent on my chest, the Dutch Army canvas one, in desert camo. Got my fishing rod gear, as you can see, and uh, that's kind of strapped to the top of my back. Just pretty much stopped to back to a main road at the moment, just to get a little breath. Uh, I'm going to head down to a stone bank of the river, sort of island thing. Do some fishing, cook a roast joint of beef and have some, uh, just a good old play around. So yeah, stay tuned and we'll uh, bring you back as we go, as normal. Just a little bit of honesty from me. Uh, last week, when I was, uh, when I did that three nighter and I walked back from the village, I did part of it by road and part of it cross country. Yeah, my navigation skills are not what they used to be. So I need to seriously work on navigation skills. It's something I've never paid too much of a heed to in the last five years because I've never really needed it. But if I'm wanting to go outside my comfort zone a little bit, then definitely navigation is something I need to work on and I'd like to do the old fashioned way other than these up to date sat navs and stuff just because yeah I don't want to depend on batteries and stuff I'd rather just have my map well, this is the first time I've actually been on this side of the river for well this this year anyway and look at the wash up look at the size of that log that's like a canoe log that when I say a canoe log, I mean a log you could carve a canoe out of. It's big enough and wide enough. It'd be nice if I found one of them that size at one of my camps. Get my chainsaw to that sucker and carve a canoe. It'd be epic. That's all. I'm gonna put that on my summer to-do list. Summer to-do list, try and carve a canoe. Or attempt to carve a canoe. Obviously I'd take the roughage off with, like most of it off with the chainsaw and then finish it off with my axe and maybe some other tools I can acquire. But yeah, I wanted to do that for like three years now. I just never found the log good enough. See this path, right? Watch. And it's gone. <laughs> Roper undercut the river from there. To there, and it's left this massive huge cove cutting. That'll be when it's really uh, on flood and it's eating away at the banks. Let's see how they're undercut too, so we've got to make sure we not step too close to the edge. You don't get that on the other side because it's all stone banks, you see. I do apologise for the wind if you're getting that, but uh, too bad. <laughs> I've got to stop for a five minute break at the landslide, which is quite close to where I'm going tonight. So I uh, just stopped at this little area, it's uh, quite a deep fishing hole, right there. There's a lot of debris in the water still, like branches and fallen trees and all that. I took off my rucksack. <laughs> Oh man, I've brought so much kit, kit for a one nighter, it's ridiculous, but at least I'm physically fit to carry it, so that's all that matters. Be a good workout. So <laughs> I've got fishing kit, roll mat. Roll mat too is so skinny, I don't know how I'm going to cope with it on one of these uh, stone bits. But we'll see, canvas tents in there, and I've also got food in that bit of it there. Sleeping bags on the outside. So yeah, I've got everything I need, plus more. Got like, even though I brought the tent, I've still got a basher and a 3.5 DD tarp with us. Just in case we get an excessive rain, because those canvas tents aren't really waterproof around the zips. Which is what the only downfall about it, but I get my fire so close that it just keeps it dry anyway. There's fish camp there. One of my old ones. I still go to it now and then, but not in a while. It's a nice sandy spot. So much wood, look at that nice bone dry log. It's just everywhere over here. It's because I've not been here to clean it up yet. 
There's normally a little uh, beach bit here, but it's gone. You can see like remnants of it, but not what it used to be. There's my fish camp from last year. There's loads of debris because it's been flooded. You can see the wash over. Like all the grass is pointing in the same direction and there's loads and loads of debris in the bushes. About waist high. Stone pit's still there. My little uh, rod rest still there, bench. And uh, there's my little fishing spot. I cast one over there and one over here. And I've even got a smoothish spot for my tent. Here's another camp of mine that I used last summer, but it's been kind of bust up and burnt. That's not that bad, I can tuck them logs and use them in my fire. Yeah, there's only a thin layer of sand on this. It's just stones underneath. Because I've just got no anchor points that I can stick into the ground, I'm just going to use these big stones. And that should do the job.
grand. A raw mat going in there. <coughs> I have my wool blanket going on top of that. That is the skinniest raw mat I've, I've used in months. <laughs> Might as well just be a bit of tin foil. So this is camp so far. I've got my bed in, I've got my tent up, my food bag's here with, uh, I've just put everything else food-wise into that bag, instead of my main rucksack. I've got my multicam basher on the floor just so I can sit a little bit closer to the fire. Uh, this guidelines to this rock here and hopefully this is gonna be my fire, so I might want to adjust that and put it on a stick, I don't know yet. Bottle of water, I've been rehydrating because that was quite a long walk in. These uh, tents are designed to be zipped together with another tent. I've not had a go at that yet. I need to bring my other one out and have a go with that at some point. Uh, yeah, raw mats, skinny as hell. But my wool blanket and my British Army Arctic sleeping bag will keep us warm. I've got my softy jacket in there too. And yeah, fishing tackles here. No, I uh, got... <laughs> I never bought maggots this time because I didn't have time to get to the fish and tackle shop. So I have worms that I've dug up out of my compost bin. And uh, yeah, this is my fish and tackle. I have two fishing rods and all my stuff here. It's my little dirt box. The size of some of them worms. Massive worms. Yeah, it's a little bit jumbled everywhere at the moment. These should be in these little pockets here. And just fell out. Flap where the rods are kept. Rods are kept in there. And uh, then underneath I've got my landing net and my ross my rod rests and some floats that I've never actually used yet. Just don't use floats at all. Never needed to. So yeah, I'm gonna get these bad boys set up. I'm gonna salt my fire pit first, I think.
Let's make up both my rods in now. I'm not going to light a fire yet, I'm just going to collect firewood quietly. And give it a couple of hours, wait until it gets dark and then light it then. And then I might just fish it a little bit further down in that quiet spot over there. Just away from the fire and me cooking. All you can hear is water, birds and the wind going through the trees. It's brilliant. It's getting dark before long. Got a nice big pile of firewood there. Nice big pile of firewood there. And that's just far away from campers. I've left all the stuff close just to collect easy when it gets dark. It's all the birds going into nest for the night. right over the river. Now I've got the fire lit. Didn't take much, not with all the dry wood around. Wind's picking up a lot, eh? Very windy. Still no fish. Still no fish. The uh, wind's feeding that fire nicely, like it's drying wood, like there's no tomorrow. Zebra can's boiling. Careful that. Yeah, chuffed a bit. Tim found my uh, Mora at the village when we were there the other day. I didn't make a video of it. And uh, I've got my Mora robust with us. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having a little rust problem. Like. Look at that. second let it focus in. Come on. There we go. The uh, more robust. That has uh, rust spots on it too. And they're practically brand new. Random. So I'm just sitting here contemplating how I'm going to cook this giant beef I've got and well spit roast with the wind I'm not going to get a good heat on the spit roast like because the winds just keep on blowing it cold so I think I might beef up my fire and try and brown it off on a spit roast and then see how we go from there
maybe depending <laughs> we'll see got this old washed up bit of wood from my first peg and I've just banged it into the ground as far as it until it hit rocks and then just wedged it around with stones put this one there and then dropped that one behind it so it pushed it into it need to find another one Such a strong gust of wind, I believe my tripod over. I thought my camp was away there, like. Look, it's pulled out the top of my tent. I'm actually going to cook it on the spit roast bowl the whole, the whole way, the whole way, just because it's so awesome. Still no fish. Well, I'm not, I'm not casting in now. My rods are just sitting there. Beef's now wrapped and foiled and I've lowered the spit roast a bit and built up the fire. See if we can get a constant core temperature in it. It's no rain yet, which I'm quite happy about.
It's not wind, how long? Pretty tame down here. So, the situation is as followed. Wind's blowing the smoke everywhere on this way. And there's trees over the river, you can't see them. I'm hearing cracking and sudden and all sorts of that. And I'm just worrying because some of them trees are big enough to actually hit us over here. Fall across that river. Get the canopy of a tree hitting camp, that's the last thing we need. So I'm just, uh, can't see any that's looking fallable anyway. Yeah, got my potatoes boiling in there, got some mixed vegetables in there. That's going to go up once the potatoes are closer to cooking. And then I've got some gravy and I've got some nice giant Yorkshire puddings there. Loving life, I'm roasting her. Still no fishy fishy, but uh, Pop my rod back out for an hour. I'll probably bring it back in again for going to sleep. She can't really leave them unattended. Look at that beef dripping. So I've put the rain cover over my thing just to give it a little bit of protection so it's lighter to carry back when it's wet you know the beef's almost done not long now it's being wrapped the beef now it's looking totally awesome Veg and potatoes are now in there. Gravy's on there. The Yorkshire pudding is burning. Damn. God. Good job I brought there. Back up the Yorkshire pudding. God. I almost burnt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved it to the top of the spit roast pole. A safer place. Gravy there, with bits of ash in it. Yes. Well, that's me chilling out now. I'm gonna get a few hours sleep and get up before the sun comes up and do some more fishing. So we'll see you in like four hours. Well, I was up at six and I just caught the sun coming up. I've just chucked some small twigs on my fire this morning and it's uh, caught quite fast. I need to get up and get some firewood, but cut into my finger last night. Right about there. Just one of those uh, hazards of camping. <laughs> Got a boo boo. So, said the can's back on. Coffee and porridge. Rain's on. Mm. 
nutritious breakfast of porridge oats and coffee. <laughs> Packed up, all tidied. Awesome. Shame, it. shame I didn't catch anything, but it's uh, that's fishing for you. Well, guys, that's it again for this one. We'll uh, catch you all again soon. Thanks for watching. And also, the I did it one night in the other. Tim Robson filmed that, so yeah, I didn't really get enough footage to make a video, so, but yeah, we found the new hammock spot at the village, for the new village, so yeah, 